Hi, I'm Juliana with the California Employers Association, or CEA, a BBB accredited business providing California with human resource support. We offer employers peace of mind and specialize in compliance, training, and recruitment. As we all know, California businesses are hurting. We are here to provide some guidance on how businesses can navigate through this pandemic. Today, we will answer some of your burning questions and talk about what goes into preparing a COVID-19 prevention plan, or CPP. The California Division of Occupational Safety and Health, also known as Cal OSHA, requires most employers to have a written CPP to reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission. Here's what you need to include in your COVID-19 prevention plan. Assign responsibility. When you're drafting your CPP, the first thing you wanna do is pick someone who will be responsible for implementing and enforcing your plan. This can be a safety officer, HR professional, business manager, or anyone you see fit. It's also essential for your employees to receive training on common COVID-19 symptoms and to be able to spot other possible hazards in your workplace. Make sure to document who is providing the training, when your training will take place, and keep a list of the employees who attended. The next step is to check your workplace for COVID-19 hazards and document them in your CPP to include potential exposures for your employees, customers, or vendors. Once you can identify your potential workplace hazards, you need to detail your plan for controlling them. Document your requirements for physical distancing, face coverings, disinfecting protocols, and the steps you are taking to optimize ventilation throughout your workplace. After you have these documented, figure out what form of communication works best for your employees. Have your employees submit their concerns in writing and sign an acknowledgement that they reviewed your CPP. This is a great way to set expectations up front and hold your employees accountable. Employees get sick all of the time, so make sure to write down their symptoms and figure out if they're experiencing COVID-19 related symptoms. Also, don't forget to document your process for investigating whether their COVID-19 case is work-related. Now, one of the most common questions we receive from employers is what do I do if an employee tests positive? Here are five steps. One, it's best to be proactive. Regularly review and update your COVID-19 prevention plan as needed. Two, within one business day, provide a written notice or send an email to your employees and union representatives who were at the same work site when your employee was infectious. Don't forget to translate your document for employees who may speak other languages. Do not reveal any identifying information about the individual who tested positive, as this is not permitted under the law. The notice should indicate that someone in your workplace tested positive or was diagnosed with COVID-19. You must also include information regarding COVID-related benefits, site safety, as well as anti-discrimination and retaliation notices. Make sure to keep a record of the notification for at least three years. If you want a template for a written COVID-19 exposure notice, visit CEA's website in the description box below. Three, within three business days, you're required to provide a written notice to your workers' compensation claims administrator, regardless of whether the virus was contracted at work. Feel free to reach out to your carrier to find out if they have a sample form available. Four, investigate if your employee contracted the virus at work. You may ask your employee some questions about how they believe they contracted it. To respect their privacy, keep your questions generalized and document your findings. Do not ask your employees for private medical details about themselves or their family members. Here are some general questions to ask. Where do you believe you contracted COVID-19? Were you around anyone who tested positive recently or was experiencing associated symptoms? Was this person someone at work or someone outside of work, such as a friend, family member, or roommate? As with any investigation, you determine whether it is more likely than not that the employee contracted the virus at work. Consider your employees' general activities in and outside of work, other COVID-19 cases, and the nature of their work site. For example, some businesses may have increased exposure risks, such as workers in high contact professions and customer facing positions. Five, administer leaves of absence per your policies and state, federal, and local requirements. This may include COVID-19 related leave, state mandated leave, sick leave, or negotiated leave provisions. Under California law, many employees are eligible for workers' compensation benefits if they test positive during an outbreak at your workplace. Because the burden is on the employer to show that COVID-19 transmission is not work-related, this is just another reason you should investigate and document your findings. 
While it may be overwhelming when you learn an employee tested positive for COVID-19, a response plan can go a long way. So make sure to keep a copy of your CPP on site so your employees, vendors, and Cal OSHA representatives can have a copy of it in case of an emergency. Keep in mind that if your employees receive the COVID-19 vaccination, it does not change the required or recommended steps. If you want to learn about what employers are exempt from having a COVID-19 prevention plan, check out the links below and visit employers.org backslash COVID-19 for more COVID resources. Thank you for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below.